everyone, Tony Phelan here from Competition X, and today we're going to have an inside look at the 110 scale four wheel drive Truggy from Techno RC, the ET410. So the ET410 is based on Techno's astounding four wheel drive buggy, the EB410. Now there's a 95% parts compatibility, meaning that 95% of the parts that work on the EB410 will also work on the ET410. Uh, there's only a few minor updates to this vehicle from the EB. Uh, the chassis, and there's an updated 3mm 70-75 CNC chassis. Uh, the suspension arms are different, shock towers are different, rear shocks are different, body mounts, and of course the body. Other than that, parts are pretty, are, are pretty much compatible. Uh, there's some, also some driveline updates to this, as well as a new set of 32-pitch gears. Now, they did that because... Techno is saying that you can run pretty much any power system through this vehicle. It'll handle it. These new 32 pitch gears are much stronger, so they'll be able to handle way more power whether you take this on the track or you go out bashing with it. So before we show you the on-track performance, let's go over some of the features that are under the hood of the ET410. So as you can see, this has a very weight forward setup. You can see the large 32 pitch gears, the reverse bell crank steering system, the large 13 millimeter big bore shocks, very beefy suspension parts, rear anti-roll bar, CBDs. Another trick little feature is the little hoop in the battery strap. I'm not sure if this is what it's used for, but it's very good for holding the other lead when you've unplugged your battery. With the fan sitting right on the motor mount, you'll want to pull in some cool air. Techno has supplied scribe lines in the body to, for these little air vents. I actually cut a huge hole put some screen behind it, and now I've kind of made my own cold air induction system. One thing you're going to want to do is notch the entire area here where the body mounts are. As the chassis flexes, if you just drill holes, these two body mounts will tend to tear the hole. This allows the body mounts to float a little bit and not ruin your body. To power our ET410, we've gone with a full lineup of R1 Works equipment, a 10.5 V16 R1 motor, a 6,000 milliamp 2S graphene shorty lipo, digital 2 200 amp ESC, and a digital drive low profile servo with an 80 millimeter wire. And don't forget to add your R1 Works program box to extract as much power as possible from this system. When it came to choose our tires, we went with Proline and they sent over a full set of Positron and Ion tires to mount on our team associated wheels. We will be controlling the ET410 with Futaba's awesome 7PX radio system. And finally, look at that paint. Fabulous job by Sharkbait Design Works. Batteries charged, got my radio, let's go out and play.
Okay, so let's get to my likes and dislikes of this truck. Uh, starting with the likes, um, right out of the box, the kit went together well. Uh, the build was fantastic. The shocks went together well. There were no no weird fitment issues with suspension parts. Put them together, they all free, uh, uh, swing freely. Steering swung freely. Um, there were no really issues of getting to like hidden screws that you had to kind of tilt or move. Everything went together uh, very smoothly. So that's a great start. Um, I've put about 50 battery packs to this roughly. Um, and it's, it's, it's a phenomenal truck. I did have to adjust the tuning a little bit for my track, OCRC. Uh, but other than that, the truck handles great. It has great steering, has great rear traction. It jumps fantastically. You control it in the air with a four-wheel. The four-wheel drive allows you to control it in the air really well to adjust your landing, um, the angle of your landing. Uh, adjusting turnbuckles was easy. Everything was easy to get to, to adjust. Um, like I said, I only made a few minor adjustments to it. Uh, but other than that, it worked great. Now, I really only have two gripes with this vehicle. They're both quite minor, but they're still things that really kind of bug me. The first one is attaching the front bumper to the chassis. Now, it uses two screws that go in from the front of the car. So as you can see here, every time you come off a jump, you're digging into the dirt and filling those holes with dirt. So every time off the track, you gotta get in there and you gotta dig this out. Obviously, I didn't do it for this video to show you, but you gotta dig that out every single time. And it's, it's a minor nuisance, but it's something you have to do because right now that's going to be tough to get out of there because the dirt's all hardened up. You get in there, you start digging away at the screws. Um, some kind of mounting from the bottom would be nice. Sure, you're going to get a little bit dirty, but you're not going to cake it into the front. Um, this appears to be one of those things that a lot of the four-wheel drive cars have on, on the market do, not just necessarily the Techno, um, but it is a common thing and it sucks. So um, that's one of the things I don't like. The other one is the use of the 32-pitch gears. Now, I understand why Techno has used 32 pitch gears. They want to make sure that there's no gear train failure while you're driving this thing with whatever kind of motor you have, whether you're racing on the track or bashing out in the field. But for me, I didn't have any 32 pitch gears. Um, so I had to go out and buy a handful of 32 pitch gears. Now they're not that expensive, but for somebody who's, who's a racer, racers don't have 32 pitch gears. We have 64 and we got 48. Never have 32 because there's no real reason to have them. Um, so I, I, bought an, I bought a 32 pitch gear, put it on there, realized it was wrong, bought another one, realized I still was not in the ballpark with the gearing. So I had to keep buying extra uh, 32 pitch pinion gears to get it to work with this truck. Um, I've seen some guys change this spur gear out with the spur gear that's using the EB410, the buggy version. That allows you to use 48 pitch gears and that way you have a whole slew of them. Most likely if you're a racer, you got a whole slew of 48 pitch gears, so that's fine. Um, if you're a first time buyer of this vehicle, first time maybe RC person, you wanna go out and bash this thing, buying 32 pitch gears isn't really gonna be that big of a deal because you gotta buy gears anyway. But my deal was I had to go out and buy, you know, 15, 10 or 15 uh, pinion gears to, to, to match this thing for different track conditions that I'll never use on anything else but this vehicle. So that was kind of a bummer. So I put all the links in the products that I've used in the ET410 build in the description. You can put any comments down below in the comment section and if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, there's also a bell notifier you can click to make sure you're notified of any future Competition X uh, videos. So thanks for watching. Hope this helped you with your potential purchase of the ET410. It's a fantastic truck. You can't go wrong with it. And hope to see you at the track.